Hello and welcome to In the Envelope, an awards podcast. I am, as always, your host, Jack Smart, the awards editor at Backstage, your guide to the acting industry and the most trusted name in casting. We're here to give you a front row seat to the small screen's biggest awards race, the 2017 Emmy Awards. This season of In the Envelope is brought to you by HBO. It's one of those moments where you go, wow, she loves this as much as I do. And we felt like we were in a play. It was just me and her. That was Emmy Award winner Regina King, um, which uh, was an interview that... Jamie and I just recorded. Isn't that right, Jamie? We did. It was a very good interview. Yes, it was. And uh, I'm so excited for our listeners to hear it. Um, Regina joined us from L.A., and I'm here in New York. And um, we got into it on a lot of the reasons why she's such an amazing actor. Yeah. A two-time, a consecutive two-time Emmy winner for the last two years, nominated again in that same category. Um but also a director. And we, we, Jamie and I were just talking about how one of the best parts of this interview is that she kind of gives some really insightful breakdowns on directing, on being on both sides of the camera, and some really useful advice for actors who are new to that world or actors who are not new to that world, I suppose. Yeah, you really got into the nitty-gritty there with the uh, Mm -hmm. the questioning. So congratulations. Well done. Oh, (laughs) thank you. Yeah, thank you. She... um, Yeah, she's spoken with us before. She's a fan of ours. We're a fan of hers. And it's because, as she points out, she's talking to her brethren. She's talking to her Mm. fellow actors. And, you know, we're here to ask about the craft and the business of acting. And this is Regina King. She knows about the craft and business of acting. Yeah, and from multiple sides, like you mentioned, you know, from and how she takes her Mm. experience from an early age as an actor and applies that as a director. And I thought that Mm -hmm. was really fascinating. I think listeners are going to get a lot out of that. Yeah, I'm so interested in how actors, some have just a very definitive style of working. And I love when you can kind of see that reflected in their performances, because in Regina's case, she, as she revealed, she's someone who very much prefers to when filming a scene to just dive right into the meatiest, most emotional part, Mm. preferably to film her sides of the scene first, preferably um, in close-up. And it's because she's an amazingly brave performer, but also because she is experiential. She's an experiential learner. She learns by doing. And that, as you said, that does come back to her time as a child actor when she starred on the sitcom 227. Um, where she kind of laid the groundwork for all of her her future inspirations. And that makes sense that she, you know, she wasn't over-intellectualizing her performance as, an, a, yeah. as a child actor, so it makes sense why right. yeah. starting that at an early age, has, that has uh, permeated her adult career right. as well. Right. And even if you, listener, uh, don't have a style of acting that kind of matches that, there's still plenty of wisdom in this interview. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, for you to take into your life and into your next job. Definitely. In fact, I mean, this is as much of a guidebook on how to win an Emmy Award as any of our other (laughs) interviews, if not more so. Um, And I'm just so excited for this upcoming ceremony because she is in the very unusual, it must be pointed out, it's a very unusual position for an actor to win in the limited series or movie categories multiple times in a row. Yeah. Because those are always different every year. It's perfectly fine for a comedy, you know, actor in a comedy or drama, but in her case, she's kind of the reigning champ, and this is the third season of American Crime, and she did (laughs) incredible work. So, we're excited. Absolutely. Can't wait. Uh, Was I a little bit too, like, uh, was I, like, a little bit too gaga over her? (laughs) No. I kept, like, praising her, because I find her so amazing. You're just enthusiastic. That's fine. I was very enthusiastic. I've realized over the course of these podcasts that I say absolutely way too much yes oh my so, god and i say brilliant way too much. oh really <laughs> yes so i'm trying to avoid those that are our word. words yeah me too yeah. me too so this is good to know well notes for next time yeah all right let's get to our interview with regina king yeah Ah, uh, can't wait let's do it 
This episode is brought to you by HBO's original limited series, The Night Of, which delves into the intricate story of a fictitious murder case in New York City, examining the police investigation, the criminal justice system, and the purgatory of Rikers Island, where the accused awaits his trial. The Washington Post raves, John Turturro and Riz Ahmed shine. For your Emmy consideration in outstanding limited series and all other categories. Regina King is the reigning champ of the Emmy Award for Outstanding Featured Actress in a Limited Series or TV Movie for the last two years running for ABC's American Crime. She got her start as a child actor in 227 and went on to star in films including Boys in the Hood, Jerry Maguire, and Ray, and TV shows including The Big Bang Theory, Shameless, Southland, and The Leftovers. A director as well as an Emmy-winning actor, Regina has plenty of advice for actors at all levels of their career. Here it is, our interview with Regina King. Congratulations on your third consecutive Emmy nomination. Thank you. How does it feel? It feels great. It feels great. It feels great to still have a job and be working on other things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. (laughs) Um, Because, you know, the nomination comes after you've done the work. Yeah. So Mm. while the nomination is great, you still hope and pray that you're still waking up in the morning to do something else, you know? Right, right. Because it's true of every working actor that you go through dry spells and you could find a time when you don't have a lot of work in front of you, right? Yeah, yeah. Nobody wants to have that. No, no. And backstage users, they want to hear about that, I think, from especially from successful actors because it's, I think there's a misconception that once you reach a certain level of success, once you win an Emmy Award, for example... It's you're good to go and you can work every day for the rest of your life and take your pick of the many projects before you. That's not quite always the case, right? No, it's not quite always the case. And it's sometimes the case is is that, but it's not necessarily the work that you want to do. You know, Mm. you are, are working to continue the same lifestyle that you have, but Mm. not necessarily able to do a project that you're really passionate about because you can't find the financing or, you know, and Mm. and I'm mentioning those stars that have done those $20 million, $15 million deals. And, Mm. and it's been a Mm. movie that was a huge success and they kind of, have to continue to keep doing that same sure. type of film. Mm-hmm. Well, and this third season, this third Emmy nomination for this show, even though you're playing, it's an anthology show and you're playing completely different characters, does it feel like, oh, another round of doing the press for the show, another round of the quote-unquote Emmy campaign? Or is it different for an anthology show where you're kind of talking about three different characters? No, it's like that for everything that you do, regardless <laughs> okay. if it's a movie, a show, yeah. uh, whatever. You know, <laughs> when you're on the press tour to talk about it, it's okay, I'm going to be talking about this yeah. for 15 hours. <laughs> um, yeah. But, you know, it's it's part of the part of the whole package. Yeah. And do you get asked the same questions over and over again? Yes, you do. You do. But again, you know, um, how often is it like just recently we were just in the car driving over here and Mm -hmm. um, I was saying, oh, wow, I didn't even know a Spider-Man movie was out. So Uh (laughs) it just goes to show that even though you may feel like you're the hamster on the wheel doing Mm. the same thing over and over again, part of it, the cycle is because everybody's not listening at the same time. Everybody's not watching at the same time. Yeah. And there's so much content out there, especially on TV. So much content (laughs) to, you know, sure that they're... they're those true fans, mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. at the end of the day, uh, you're always looking for ways to broaden your audience. So yeah, 
you kind of have to answer the same question <laughs> again and again because they're different outlets always. Of course, too, right? You know. Well, I'm going to try to ask questions that uh, most other outlets wouldn't ask. Um. <laughs> well, I mean, I think there's a sensitivity here because it, this is uh, mm. backstage, you know, yeah. that um, we're, we're, we're speaking to our peers. We're, we're talking right. to um, each other. So that right. I think that that makes it more of a conversation, I guess. Yeah. And it's, I mean, we're certainly not here to ask interviewees about their personal lives or about what they're wearing (laughs) or any kinds of kind of personal questions like that, unless it's relevant to the craft and to the business of acting. Yeah. So that's so, always a good thing. Yeah, and I'm so glad that you're a fan of Backstage. Did you, when when you were kind of starting off, take me back to the early days. First of all, did you ever use Backstage? You were cast on a show, very young. Um, no. I mean, I'm always, you know, aware of it. You know, it's it's yeah. it's a it's a publication that is part of the actors conversation, mm-hmm. like. The Hollywood Reporter or Variety or Samuel French, you know. The, oh, cool. Yeah. The, those. I used to intern there. Oh, did you really? Oh, yeah. wow. <laughs> but, you know, those things are, those, I would say, are no matter what city you're in as an actor, mm. you have heard those. Excellent. Uh, yeah. Publica- of those publications or mm-hmm. of that bookstore or, you know. Right. Uh, so... I I never actually used it because I was cast so young mm-hmm. and um fortunately my career you know kept going from yeah. there. Yeah. So th- that that's definitely a blessing but I was always aware of backstage. Yes. Excellent. Well, and I'm curious about 227 too because obviously it it's very much a foundation for you as your introduction to the industry. Um and your kind of next big project was was a very different role in a very di- very different character in Boys in the Hood, and so it kind of sounds like you got the opportunity to show off one side of yourself and then almost rebrand, right? Well, yeah, I mean, I think that that's necessary for um, actors that really are, you know, either character actors mm. or um, they're not in it because they want to be a celebrity. They're in it right. because it's 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 an art form. Hmm. And um, if that is who you are, you definitely have to be consciously working to not get yourself in a position where you're pigeonholed. Right. And it was really, really important at that time for me not to be looked at as the little girl or Mary's daughter, because I don't Mm -hmm. think that while... I might have been a sweet little face or, oh, she's so <laughs> cute. I don't mm-hmm. know that I, I at that point, um, had the opportunity on a big scale to show my abilities. You know, like, for sure. example, you have a Rick Schroeder. He was, you were mm-hmm. able to see how amazing he was as, at a, as a child mm-hmm. in The Champ, mm-hmm. and, you know, and... Um, Leonardo yeah. DiCaprio, totally. same thing, yeah. you know, but I didn't have that opportunity. While mm. I learned so much being on 227 and just working with Marla Gibbs and Hal Williams and the importance of professionalism and hmm. those jewels that you can't, you, you, you those are, they're jewels, they're gifts. Mm-hmm. Um, and they, they are a big I think a big part of why I've been able to continue for as many years as I I have, mm-hmm. um, but uh, I think Boys in the Hood allow people to go, oh, okay, <laughs> yo, she is an actress, mm-hmm. you know, and uh, no longer a child, and like, no longer a child, yeah, a still woman. a child. I think I think you yeah. know because when you look at that character in Boys in the Hood, you know they were still children. For you sure, know? yeah. Yeah. She almost acted older than her actual age. And that's because 
people that have that experience, you know, there are a lot, no yeah. matter what country you're in, mm. what city you're in, when you've lived a hard life and have seen some pretty gnarly things, mm -hmm. it matures you quickly. You, you sure. have to grow up fast just to survive. Mm. Mm -hmm. So that's why so often you see um, young kids that are um, actually kids, but are mature beyond their years. Yeah. because they had to to protect themselves. Oh, interesting. Well, and I also feel like starring at, on a sitcom as a kid, that is almost, that does force you to mature at a kind of a quicker rate, right? Oh, my gosh. Absolutely. Um, that professionalism. Definitely. I mean, look, at, you know, 20, you know, I was owning property. Mm -hmm. Where, wow. yeah. you know, most people are like, OK, I think I'm going, <laughs> going to change my major now, right. you know, right. so yeah. same. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> so it definitely grows you up quickly. Yeah. Well, and speaking of changing your major, I want to I wanted to ask about your time at USC because you you were only there for two years, correct? Mm -hmm. And you didn't study acting there. No, I did not. I think for me, um, again, I, I feel like no matter where I am, no matter what I do, I am a student of some sort. And Ooh, uh -huh. I think so often, this is one of the things that I love about being a director, you're a leader mm -hmm. and you're a student, um, mm -hmm. sometimes at the same time. Okay. And um, uh, w when I was accepted to SC, you know, I was not really interested in going back into the classroom thing. I, I'm a, right. I, I like to learn from it experientially. Yeah. Learn by <laughs> and, doing. Yeah. yeah. And, um, I just felt like if I majored in, um, drama that, mm that was not going to expose me to more things. Yeah. That's so interesting because for a lot of, uh, like you're an experiential actor rather than a theoretical one, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yes, definitely. And sometimes I feel like I see some performances sometimes and I feel like I can tell which actors are mm. actors that have studied some place and with this mm. particular type of technique um, yeah. and actors that are just raw and yeah right and I and I think and 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 not saying that one actor is better than the other I'm just saying sometimes right. I can tell yeah yeah and yeah and you must tell in your scene partners too like that must be so interesting to to kind of work a scene out with someone and be like, oh, you're a kind of person who learns this way or who prepares a role this way. Yeah, usually I find when I'm <laughs> uh, <laughs> the I, even if I don't know an actor's background mm -hmm. or haven't been able to uh, guess from watching one of their performances, mm -hmm. I can tell that they study <laughs> drama in college by the way uh -huh. they approach the scene. Right. They want to okay. talk it through and talk it out and yeah. do a okay. whole lot more than I really want to do. I'm kind of more like, the, let's let's get it, get in it, and let's mm. see where it lands. But I don't want to yeah. over-talk it. I don't want to... Uh, squeeze out all those little great things that you find. You want to find them on camera. Gotcha. You know, I feel like I can tell that about your acting too, because I and I was just rewatching some clips from your incredible performances in American Crime, <laughs> where I do feel like a lot of your work is in the reacting and is in American Crime. Does this thing? I almost feel like it's the signature of the show to have the camera on the person listening rather mm -hmm. than the person talking, and your reactions are so organic. And they feel like a one and done take. <laughs> I don't know how often that happens, but it feels like the very first take and the very last take. Uh, all at once. Um, sometimes it does happen that way. Sometimes uh -huh. it does. Um, but I think that that also comes from, you know, with American crime, we all we just had an amazing leader in um, John mm -hmm. Ridley, and when someone is leading uh, with grace, 
you're yeah. you're mm. open and and you're you're listening and and you're um you you're, you're ready to take direction and also share your um ideas because mm-hmm. the, he's laid he's allowed the ground to be open so that you can so when everyone, meaning the crew members and the actors, are going into it like that, mm. it uh, allows um, moments like that to happen over and over again. Like you, mm. you probably can talk to Felicity or talk to Benito or talk mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. Um, Lily or Tim, and mm. they probably would say a bit of the same thing. Mm-hmm. You know, that there's just these moments that happen and they happen because we we trust John. Yeah. The and, trust he tru- and he trusts crucial. us. Right. Mm-hmm. Oh, of course. Well, he trusts you guys because you're all phenomenally talented. No. <laughs> I, think, I think that's part of it. But I'm I'm super interested in this idea of like diving in of that of of like you're the kind of actor who wants to just kind of get your hands dirty and try it. Does that ever backfire? <laughs> um so, well, knock on wood. In, uh-huh. in, in my case, it hasn't. You know, it's because I guess I've been blessed enough to work with directors and actors and mm-hmm. DPs who who subscribe to that as well. Um, yeah. When I have come across certain directors that are like, okay, well, you know, we want to rehearse this scene, mm-hmm. you know, and I'll kind of be like, oh, <laughs> yeah. and then I'll let them know, all right, you know, I, I, I understand that you want to rehearse, because sometimes they want to rehearse just because it might be a really mm-hmm. huge sequence that's going to take time uh-huh. and so logistically w- yeah yeah so I so I get that and and whenever I've gone in and said yeah I, I'm, I'm not trying to beat this to death so I, you know right. and they totally get it I've, I've never had a director go yeah well you know <laughs> I want to just you know see what we get I, I've I've never had that right and I'm in terms of I mean going off of this incredible cast as American crime is a great example because it's such an amazing cast. How often do you then go in a scene with a scene partner? You're sharing these intense dialogue one-on-one and you're learning from them. And what kinds of things do you learn? Maybe like the first time you work with such an actor. Mm, I mean, I, again, I feel like I'm always learning. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know for when you brought that up. Although we're talking about American crime, I immediately went to leftovers. Ah, with, <laughs> I was hoping you were going to go. There. Uh, we just spoke to Carrie Coon. Oh, we, did you? We did briefly talk about that scene with the two of you in close up, which is oh, you guys got to talk about it. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That scene that gives me chills still to think yeah. about. So that was one of those moments where, mm-hmm. you know, you you you're. I don't know how to say this without it sounding like a hmm. narcissist. Oh, but, okay. <laughs> but it's one of those moments where you go, wow, she loves this as much as I do. Mm, mm. And we felt like we were in a play. It was just oh, me cool. and her. And, mm. you know, that camera could have been sitting like, two inches from our ears and we wouldn't have, (laughs) it was just she and I. Mm. And um, those moments are rare. They're also like Mm. the, 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 those little reminders from the universe that tell you, yeah, I I, I blessed you with this Mm. gift and Mm. want you to share it. And not only do I want you to share it with an audience, share it with each other and yeah. you know that was a moment for us to share and it was it was wonderful that is beautiful oh my god mm-hmm. i love thinking about that scene yeah. <laughs> and i do feel like it's just a master class in acting oh like thank you so much <laughs> yeah um what was the do you remember what the first take of that was like compared to the last take i'm guessing there was not like you're saying like no rehearsal no let's talk it out no there really wasn't again we had um uh craig uh craig sobel craig craig oh gosh i'm 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 
can't remember his last name. Craig, uh-huh. Z, it's like a Z or something like that. Shucks. Um, he was one of those directors that definitely mm. was a, that doesn't is not into the overdoing things, over rehearsing mm. and over talking right. about it. He is definitely not one of those. Mm. And th- I think both Carrie and I appreciated that. Mm-hmm. But I, you know, there was just excitement going into <laughs> it because. You know, we get the, we get the script and we're like, oh my god, this is an eight page scene, and it's just <laughs> yeah. she and I, you know. Yeah. Um, and so I guess I'm trying to think. Here's the thing, that was um, a long scene for just two people. Mm-hmm. Um, as far as on film, you know, sure. you know, in in, in a play, yes, you mm-hmm. have that all the time, but. Um, mm. That was one of those things is, uh, uh, where we were lucky that I like to do my coverage first, if possible, and Carrie oh, okay. likes to do hers, and Carrie doesn't care. Okay. So huh. that was it's perfect, you know, because yeah. you know, huh. sometimes you have those, oh, thank you, gosh, I got to work with this actor who likes to do their coverage last. <laughs> right, You right. know, Um it's and kind of when you have those moments where um, both people like to do their coverage first or both people like to do their mm-hmm. coverage last, um, <laughs> you know, it's it's one of those moments of who's going to be the bigger person first. Uh, right. Yeah. <laughs> you gotta, yeah. And, you know, it, it kind of goes like this. Um, you know, no, I, I like to do my coverage first, <laughs> but I mean, you know, whichever you want to do, you know, I, you know, I'm fine. <laughs> you don't want to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) So a lot of times, how that ends up being uh, determined is like uh, location. You know, the light is going that way, so we're turned this way. Mm. We're gonna stay on you. You know, those all those factors come in. But um, so that made it even um, better for both of us that um, she really didn't care and. I I like to go first. You just dive right in. Yeah. yeah. Um, what about um, wide shots versus close ups? Do you have like a preference about that as well? Is that a preference that actors have? Uh, for me, it depends on the emotion of the scene. I prefer Ooh, okay. to do the um, the close up first. Okay. Um, hmm. Because it's the depending on the level of emotion, you know, you you get spent after a while. And, Mm -hmm. um, but, but sometimes, you know, again, depending on what it is that you're doing, you know, you have to do the wide shot first because it might be a bunch of extras and all. And so so the, Mm. the, the DP and the director and the ADs need to see what they're matching to. Right. You know, so they, Mm. so sometimes it has to work that way. It it just, it just can't work where, um you get to do the close up first. So mm-hmm, usually mm-hmm. um for myself, you know, I try to save um oh, okay. it, it, as, it as much as I can if I have to start in the wide. Gotcha. So it is a matter of saving like energy. Yes, or... energy, okay. really. It's mm-hmm. energy, energy, Very you cool. know, mind power. You, mm. you know, after you have a day where you're shooting uh, really emotional things. Um, oh, all day, of course. Yeah, usually most actors, you know, you go home and you just sleep. You know, yeah. you, you don't even eat. Totally, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can't take care of yourself because yeah. you're just drained. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. That's so amazing to think about, like, especially this idea that you're the kind of actor, I love this idea that you are the kind of actor who, like, put the camera on me in close up, Get let me go first, let me, like, react right away, like, dive into the material, <laughs> <laughs> like I'm thinking of this most recent I think it was in, even in the finale of American Crime Season 3 when your character uh, has to examine the contents of a body bag mm. and that was another instance where I felt they've got it. they must have just used the first take because yeah Jessica said she used the first we, we only did two they did we only did two takes wow yeah. okay wow yeah that and was so a heavy you, scene though I'm sure yeah did you and so that's that heaviness you're talking about that energy right of yes. Like the mental and the emotional toll. And so it is wise to just go for it on the first try. Yes. 
especially cool. with with that i mean yeah. um because uh and 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 i got to tell you sometimes it can be um dangerous to go first mm. because i will say that i've mm. had um instances where by the time i i i i've opted to go first and mm-hmm. by the time we get around to the other actors coverage i've mm. discovered something else uh-huh right so That's you 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 do take yeah. that away from yourself if you are a person mm. that likes to go first but right right i find that um I still rather go first. <laughs> yeah. Well, you could, because you trust your instincts enough. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And those instincts are just honed over time with with practice and experience. Yeah, I and mean, like I said, a lot of times you can't go first. A lot of times you you, yeah. you can't get your coverage done first. It it, it does not always work that way for me. Mm-hmm. You know. Mm-hmm. And how does all of this inform your directing? Like I know Actors often make fabulous directors because you have so much experience in front of the camera. Like, how many of these techniques are you then applying to the actors that you are are directing? Well, I mean, you know, I, I do ask that question sometimes. Not not oh, okay. sometimes, but a lot of the times when when it's two actors that are on the same level, meaning as far as their importance in the show. You know what I oh, mean? Uh-huh. Like, gotcha. I'll, okay. I'll ask, you know, who wants to go first? Or mm-hmm. if if I feel like it's a scene that it's more emotionally heavy for one actor, I mm. will go to the other actor and say, do you mind if they go first, if they like to? Mm-hmm. And and cool. usually they're like, fine. So I'll, I'll ask that actor mm. before I, I ask the um the, the the actor that seems to be carrying the emotional burden and and I, you just yeah. do that out of out of respect because you know the the person that's uh you know that's uh, if it's a show that's heavy on like for example a scandal where it's Carrie yeah. is working every single day you know and mm-hmm, mm-hmm. um to to she's a, and she's such a giving person mm. um you know, if it's a scene where she, her character's not carrying the emotional weight in the moment, you know, I, I've mm. got to ask her first. Well, can can I do right. their close up first if they if they if they feel like they need it? I, I will ask her before mm-hmm. I offer that to the other actor, just out of respect of gotcha. Carrie Washington. You know, totally. so right. I'm, I'm just using Carrie as an example. Yeah, because well, um, she's the star, and she yes. does have so much emotional, like, roller coasters yes, to go through. Yes, episode. yes, yes. Yeah. How do you um, give direction? How do you um, give actors notes? Um, It's different from actor to actor. I mean, that's mm-hmm. one of the biggest uh, things that you learn is be, uh, uh, um, about directing is that mm. is, there's a lot of psychology involved. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, there's there's some actors that... You know, say it's a scene that, and I'm not going to mention any names here because I don't want to tell on anybody. <laughs> um, uh, some actors that say it's a scene they're, that they're four actors in and they all have, mm. you know, stuff to do. And, you know, some actors, you know, if you want them to bring it up a notch, they are, they're super competitive. So they're the oh. type of person where you go, that was good, but <gasps> oh such gosh. and such just like ate that up. Like no that, that, that way. was that was their take, <laughs> you know. And it's and, and it's and, 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 and it's usually men. Uh-huh. That, okay. <laughs> and wow. that that say like okay, okay, okay. That's that's all they need, up. you know. Okay. And then um, for oh, some people. Um, it's, um, and, and I find that it's always better to come and talk to the actor. I like to talk to the actors in their ear Mm -hmm. or up close. Mm -hmm. I I hate when we're in situations where I have to, I can't get to them quick enough because just the set, we're in a practical location and, Mm -hmm. you know, the, 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 
the, the village is over here and they can't set up some s- small screens for me to get closer. So uh, okay. sometimes you yeah. have to, you know, yell from behind the thing. <laughs> and that's like the worst. I really yeah. hate doing that because it, it breaks an actor's concentration because they're yeah. trying to hear what you're saying. Yeah, and, okay. and, and, they, and they don't need to be doing that. They need to be focusing on what they're yeah. about to do. Yeah. So um, I try to intimate run out and have intimate conversations um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. as often as possible. But you're reading the actor and you're trying to figure out, or maybe you already know, like kind of their so, style. Um, you, 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 yeah, you got you got to get in there quickly and do a, a, a you got to do quick reads on yeah. people. Um, mm. You also, um, if you're lucky enough, if it's for shows, um, get the opportunity mm-hmm. to come to the set before. Oh, okay. You can get an idea of how it, of, of how how, uh, how people are, and yeah, um, a lot mm. of times uh, the producers will let you know. Um, oh, okay, give you a hint. Give about. you a hint of yeah. you know what to expect, and that's very very helpful um, because, yeah. like I said, it's it's a psychology. That's so interesting, and I feel like that must be especially true for TV because. Yeah, as you're saying, you have to get in there and suddenly adapt. And if it's a long-running show, like a scandal, like Kerry Washington's been working on that show for years and years and years, and so you can't swoop in there and impose your own no, styles or be a dictator. definitely or like, cannot. You yeah. know, you, you got to always be giving a note based on the arc of that character. Uh-huh, and uh-huh. you, I, I, for me, you know, I, I'm, I respect that. No one knows the character better than you. You, yeah, you, you cool. you've 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 made this character be the, the who who they are. Like just recently on Shameless, um, I had a great mm-hmm. scene that I, I like. I am just so enamored with Jeremy. I think he is just mm. such a great actor, and I just <laughs> I I can't wait to see what. His career does even beyond Shameless. He's got this Mm -hmm. James Dean type thing Mm -hmm. going on. And, (laughs) you know, his character is going through what he's going through. I mean, I don't Mm want to talk about what's about to come on the eighth season. Spoil spoil anything. But we have this one scene that he had to do. And it was something written one way. And, you know... For a moment, I thought maybe it shouldn't be that way. And for a moment, he thought it shouldn't be that way. And then it, then we talked about it and decided to do a different version, kind of, oh, okay. of, of what was written. And it was all based on F- F- Lip's journey from the past oh. seven years. And you okay. know, on all those, one little scene, not even probably 30 seconds long. But it's um, a very important scene to the story. Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it, it, it was that was that was a very cool recent moment for me, uh, actor to actor as a director. Mm-hmm. Right. And it does always come back to story and to character. Always. Yeah. Always. Yeah. And it's true that the actor is the they're the authority on their character. I I, I do believe I mean, so. <laughs> I, I don't yeah. I totally believe so. And yeah. I think that when you have when you see some of those instances where, you know, people have kind of fallen out with the creator of a show and oh, they've gone mm-hmm. their certain ways. Mm. I think it's because, you know, the actor was was seeing a different person that they were developing than what the creator was developing Mm. you know when it when it doesn't come down to personalities you know sometimes yes obviously it's just those personalities where they were like matter and antimatter they just yeah you know that can happen too yeah Yeah. but i think times when you've when Mm. you've seen you know we decided to go our separate ways or whatever um i think it's sometimes because of hmm i didn't i didn't see her as growing that way There's almost something beautiful about that. Like a character is its own thing and an actor and a writer producer both have like joint ownership over it or something. I I think so. I, because look at the end of the day that, uh, that, that writer planted the seed 
and yeah, right, um, right. or the writer put the words on the blank piece of paper. Well, it's my job to bring mm-hmm. that to life. Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. there is this beautiful partnership between a writer and an actor. Yeah, especially on TV. I yeah, like, absolutely. As it evolves, yeah. But I well, think but period. Must... I think period. I mean, it's usually, um, you know, for a lot of actors, for a lot of us, it's terrifying the idea of sitting in front of a blank piece of paper and writing something. Yeah, telling oh us God, that's terrifying, sure. and yeah. usually for a lot of writers to allow yourself to be vulnerable and expose yourself for everyone to judge <laughs> is terrifying. Yeah, so that's Use the re- your body. Yeah, to, yeah. So yeah. that's the reason why that partnership, I think, is is one that's not spoken about often, but is wow. the most intimate of all of the relationships. In the production of a piece. Yeah, sure. And that might explain why you and John Ridley are just a match made in heaven, like I said, because you're that's that writer actor collaboration at its finest. Well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it seems to me. It seems to me because you guys have had three chances with three completely different characters to create, you know, indelible, real, grounded, but also compelling characters and you've you've done three yeah yeah it's it's been a pretty uh amazing uh journey so far and it just seems to be uh just getting started for mm-hmm. the two of us you know we, we've, so we've exactly. gotten to know each other um through our art and mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. um we've gotten to know each other outside of it so i think it just mm. makes both uh relationships richer Yeah, absolutely. And I want to ask you specifically this because of these three characters and the fact that they're three such such different characters, but on different stories, but on the same show. What has each taught you? Like, how does inhabiting them must change you as an actor, right? And, And bring you into the next role with some new piece of information, maybe about yourself or about how you work, I suppose. Um, yes, I do feel like, you know, it's funny because I've, I, this question, it ha- has one that is one that I've been asked before. Mm-hmm. And I got to tell you, I'm still figuring out how right. to answer it because mm-hmm. I feel like it's so complex. Um, yeah. um, the, the, the answer is so complex because, mm-hmm. um, I feel like that there's a, a a bit of that happening with every role I've done, sure. you know, uh-huh. that's taking me to the next. Um, so I, I guess I try to find. I'm try, I'm still trying to find a way to make that answer specific to the experience of American crime. But as I'm talking to you right now, I mm-hmm. feel like it's not. It's impossible for me to make it specific sure. to. Um, um, American crime, but what I can make specific to uh, mm-hmm. uh, working on the show is that it's made me more aware of how I grow each character I play from, oh, okay. you know, Brenda on 227 mm. to um, Kamara, um, mm-hmm. an American this crime. Mm-hmm. And I don't think. I recognize that until someone just this is you're the third person that is have has <laughs> asked me that. And the first time I was asked, I was kind of like, hmm, mm. you know, I, I couldn't even answer it. I was like, I don't know. I, I, uh-huh. I don't know. I'll have to think an about that one. Yeah. <laughs> rather than. Yeah. And then the it's second time process. I thought about it a little deeper and I think I gave a little bit of an answer. But this time <laughs> I, what I realized is that each role has taken me to the next. But now maybe I'm just also at the age or having had a little bit of wisdom uh, over mm. the years to um, actually be aware of the fact that I've grown as an actor mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Each, with each role. Yeah, and I feel like that's the role of an actor is to be aware of those 
changes. Sure. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. I'm, you don't want to just, like, plateau and kind of just start giving the same performance over and over again. Right. I would, I, I, you know, I've always said that if that happens, then, you know, I, I don't really want to do this anymore. If, yeah. if that's what I'm, because part but, of what made me want to be an actor is seeing Sally Field as Norma mm. and as Sybil and just those uh-huh. characters being so different and that mm. I just was in awe of yeah that woman and just I remember saying to myself I want to make people feel like that very cool you know like yeah. I, 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 I there's just was never I don't know anything about people working in a factory I didn't know yeah. you know of course anything about a person with um multiple personalities you know mm-hmm. right and yet I knew everything from watching those two films. Wow, you know, cool. yeah, yeah. So that's what I mean by making people feel like that, making people yeah. believe what what they're seeing and hearing, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. making my heart beat fast and making the right. hair stand on my arms. Um, <laughs> yeah. So uh, it really does all come down to inspiration. Yes, it? yes, it does. I keep thinking that's that's what keeps artists driving forward i think so and i also feel like um you know i don't ever want to stop learning i I, I don't ever ever want i mean if that's the last moment that i have is that i recognize that i just learned something before i leave this earth that would be Mm. the greatest last breath to take right Mm -hmm. so um i feel like with all artists there's kind of that you know how they say that, you know, artists never finish. They just walk away. Ooh, uh-huh. You know, because you, you, totally. you can't, you, you're going to keep adding to it. You're going to go, oh, yeah. this. <laughs> oh, well, maybe this, you know. Yeah. And it's that carving in snow thing. Yeah. 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 You know, the it discovery be is a beautiful 100. thing. Right. Well, and. I should ask you some of the backstage questions before we wrap up because you are both an actor and a director and you're very good at both of those things. So I, I feel like our listeners should hear what is something that a, an actor who's new to film to, or, or to on-camera acting, maybe they're theater trained or maybe they're just you know new to a set. What's like the one thing that you wish actors in that position knew? The importance of hitting their mark. Oh, really? Yeah, okay. oh, yes. I mean, the simple as <laughs> <is> that. <laughs> because. Underrated. Yeah, man. I mean, honestly, you know, it's, again, going back to emotional scenes. Uh-huh. So say it's that moment of a scene that has a lot of emotion and you don't hit mm. your mark and don't feel that light. Mm-hmm. And that was your best take. <laughs> oh, uh huh. <laughs> you know the director, yeah. the DP, everybody's going. Oh gosh! You can't use so that, you know right. you do another take, but they, they, you, the the actor just can't get it back. The magic's gone. Yeah, oh. you got to get that baseline of technical yeah. know how just mm-hmm. out of the way. It's really yeah. important. It Second really, nature. really is. Mm. Gotcha. I want to ask too, going off the directing thing. I know it, it's a burden almost. I don't know if it's a burden, but women in film, and specifically women, female directors in film and TV, are so much a minority. It's such a rare thing that it's not really fair, I almost feel like, for me to ask you questions about it because you shouldn't have to be the spokesperson for all women in film or all women in TV. But as a female director, what... What do we need to do? What steps can we take to make things a little bit more equitable? Um, one, I think definitely t- continuing to talk about it. You know, just you asking uh-huh. this question, I think it's important mm. that we continue to shine a light on the fact that the numbers are so yeah. ridiculous. Um, yeah. Constantly just reminding producers and uh, creators, uh, that, um, there are other perspectives to telling a story, Mm. you know, Mm. the story is about a woman that sits in a chair. Well, that story is different from 
all five people that are looking at that woman in the chair. Right. You know, oh, cool. And yeah. um, you need to hear the perspective of of women, the perspective of mm. um, people of, of 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 other colors and mm-hmm. um, cultures. It's it's very important. It's part of it, it's 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 unfair not to mm. and um, yeah. un- unfair to the audience you know, unfair to the artists. Yeah. Um, so I, I feel like more than anything, we have to keep talking about it and not l- allowing it to be uh, normalized because that's yeah. that's what happened. You know, like, I mean, I'm so not even going on the the subject matter of what's happening in our country right now. Yes. But as soon as we start, it starts feeling normalized. As soon as we stop talking about it, as soon as we stop trying to get together and figure out what we can do, um, mm-hmm. th- then, then it's gonna remain the same. So yep. there are a lot of, uh, you know, uh, 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 female w- women directors who, mm-hmm. um, won't stop and don't stop. Mm. shining a light on the disparaging numbers yeah yeah and 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 they shouldn't we shouldn't so no i I don't know a woman director who would um receive you asking that question Mm. as oh once again i I don't know anyone that would right oh okay yeah. yeah. So always ask that question. <laughs> right. Because it's about, like you said, it's about having a conversation. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, and I feel like a lot of your work, specifically American crime, like is doubles as, as advocacy or doubles as political and even controversial or, or touching on hot button issues. And how important is that aspect of your, like how you see your role as an actor? It's not priority number one, I assume, when you're picking roles to you don't want to be preachy or, or saying I'm taking this on because I want to spread this message. It's more about does the does it inspire you or does it challenge you? Right. But yes, it's totally yeah. uh, about that. I don't I can't say that I went into American crime like, oh, wow, this is going to be something that m- makes people have, I don't know another word to say it, but cross conversations. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I didn't mm-hmm. go into it like that. I think the first thing I thought was like, wow, ABC is doing this? Mm, cool. You know, because yeah, yeah, yeah. because the pilot was already done before I was asked to come on right. board. Yeah. So um, To play a Muslim. Yes. So yes. that was just like, so th- mm-hmm. then at that point, yeah, when John and I are talking and he's telling me about Aaliyah and, you mm-hmm. know, that she will wear the hijab, I was like, okay, well, okay. There, there there, might be some conversations here. <laughs> <laughs> yep, and you're not going to shy away from that. No, not at all, not right, at all. Totally. Um, the opportunity mm. to um, be able to represent a voice that doesn't get the opportunity mm-hmm. to be uh heard on on mainstream absolutely yeah on network tv yeah Yeah. remarkable it's such a great show well thank you um i think we have to wrap up but is there anything else that backstage listeners of this podcast should know any other Um, last words of wisdom just don't give up you know Uh just just keep keep going keep going keep going don't give up don't let your mind beat you up. <laughs> <laughs> That's good advice, too. <laughs> and if you keep following that advice, you could win an Emmy Award. Hey, you never know. <laughs> I just rewatched your speech of the your first one, of the first Emmy, and you really, truly had, you were very shocked. <laughs> oh, yes. Very, <laughs> you, very much You did much not so. think you were going to win. No, not no. at all. Especially because, you know, at, 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 at a certain point, just looking at the landscape of 
what was being recognized in television yeah. and what wasn't. And mm-hmm. I had been vocal about it before, and I felt like being vocal once I have been vocal about it. You know, so sometimes you get the response of, oh, here goes another person on their soapbox. And, you know, kind of mm. like, you know, F that. You know, this, uh, this <laughs> yeah. I, I'm not liking the way this feels. I'm seeing yeah. a lot of talented um, performances um, be, uh, you know, overlooked. Yeah, you know, and, and sure. that's frustrating to me. And yeah, a lot yeah. of uh, talented performances and performers not being remembered. That's yeah. very frustrating mm-hmm. to me. So I'm going to say something Absolutely. about it. So when I decided to, I had a huge support from my team before mm-hmm. I decided to. And so when I did press send, I kind of felt like, well, you know. <laughs> there goes <laughs> any uh, moment of being recognized by anything, um, you know, with the Television Academy. But okay, yeah. I, I feel like I feel like this is. Ne- I feel like I need to say this out loud yeah. and not say cool. it to just people that 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 feel the same way. I I need yeah, to say it internal. Out loud. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't preach to the choir. You got to say it in the biggest platform yeah Yeah. so to do that and not be scolded by the Mm. academy but Mm -hmm. be Mm -hmm. um rewarded (laughs) you know was that was that was a huge beautiful moment for me Mm. that i share with a lot of young girls who are not Mm -hmm. familiar you know they're not paying attention to american crime or tv Mm. you know they're watching what's on youtube and, uh-huh. you know, I share with them cool. that, you know, you can speak your mind, but if you speak your mind eloquently and yes. honestly, yes. Um, it's not going to hold you back. Well, thank you for your honesty and thank you for your insights. I, I'm really, I really think that listeners are going to get a lot out of this. Oh, good. I hope so. I <laughs> hope so. <laughs> and for talking about your inspirations and your influences, because you, you inspire me, you inspire a lot of us who are big fans of you. Thank you. Well, <laughs> honestly, you inspire me because I feel like um, if you guys keep calling me back, that <laughs> means I'm doing something right and, yes. I, and <laughs> I'm yes. keeping the dream alive, you know? <laughs> <laughs> you are. Gosh, thank you so much. Thank, thank, you. thank you for being our guru. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. Uh. Aren't you glad when our interviewees are as candid and as honest and as eloquent as Regina was? Yes. I'm not going to say absolutely. Yes. Actors need, <laughs> <laughs> actors need this. Actors need her wisdom. Thank you, Regina, for joining us. Yeah, Ugh. there was a lot to chew on there. Yes. I'm going to go back and listen to it again. Is there anything else that we need to do? No, I think we're pretty much done for this episode. Indeed. I was, this was such an honor. What a great interview. Shall we roll credits? We should do. In the Envelope, an awards podcast, is recorded at Lotus Productions and ARS Studio in New York City and Soundbox LA and Mark Grau Studio in Los Angeles. Thank you, as always, to producer, editor, and all-around podcast extraordinaire, Jamie Muffet. You can follow him on Twitter, at JamieMusicNYC. You can follow me, Jack Smart, on Twitter, at JackSmartWrites. Thank you, as always, to the team at Backstage, a.k.a. the most trusted name in casting. Peter Rappaport, Ryan Remstad, Jesse Balashak, Francis Ramos, Rowan al Mark Stinson, and especially the astounding Casey Howe. For more awards and industry coverage, head over to Backstage.com. Thank you for listening. Tune in next time for another glimpse in the envelope.